Hi guys, how are you? Today I have to tell you that I am a little nervous about the video because, as you may have heard, Bloomberg journalist Jason Schreier published a very interesting article about the development of Cyberpunk 2077 and it doesn't paint a good picture of CD Projekt Red. The journalist spoke with more than 20 members of the company's staff and uncovered some very interesting things that could harm the Polish company, which is already regretting getting out of bed for 2021. But before going on and getting into the article, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell so you don't miss out on anything we have prepared for you. So there is a lot to discuss. Last weekend, Jason Schreier of Bloomberg published an extensive report which was the result of interviewing more than 20 people involved in the development of Cyberpunk 2077, ranging from developers still in the company to people who were there for a while and left. These team members, who asked to remain anonymous for obvious reasons, made several allegations in which they complained about the company's poor planning and execution in relation to the game. They complained that the company was more focused on marketing than the development itself and about an unrealistic deadline and pressured people to work many more hours than agreed before the last push. This was posted after CD Projekt Red's video apologising. Here at Zoom in Game Towers, we know we were hyped for the game. We weren't alone in this. The expectation for this game was through the roof and for us, it was the first game we had really had this for. All the videos we made were praising Cyberpunk 2077 because what we saw was something that we loved and it seemed like something from another level. The emphasis that they put into that marketing had an effect on us because, like fools, we believed it all. One of the major points that comes out of the article is that the Cyberpunk 2077 engine was developed at the same time as the game, something that, predictably, greatly hindered the creation of the game. The best description of this comes in the quote by the journalist in the article. One member of the team compared the process to trying to drive a train while the tracks are being laid in front of you at the same time. It might have gone more smoothly if the track layers had a few months head start. Adrian Jakubiak, a former audio developer at CD Projekt Red, said that one of his colleagues asked in a meeting how they planned to do something much more technically difficult in the same time that they had to develop The Witcher. To which someone replied, we'll figure it out along the way. Adrian says that he knew something was wrong, but he did not expect the catastrophe that it turned out to be. The developer also indicated that he left the company after getting married because he worked 13 hours for five days in a row and more than once. Now, the most outrageous revelation isn't that they were sort of making it up as they went along, but that they knowingly created something that they knew wasn't true. The demo that they showed at E3 2018. It explains that that demo of a dazzling world was, in quotes, almost completely false. It states, What they didn't know was that the demo was entirely fake. CD Projekt Red hadn't yet finalised and coded the underlying gameplay systems, which is why so many features, such as car ambushes, were missing from the final product. Developers said they felt like the demo was a waste of months that should have gone toward making the game. The mission of CD Projekt Red was to impress the world and for this they created this demo that was not at all similar to what they had at that time. This explains a lot. Tied into this is that even though the game's first teaser was released in 2012, the company didn't really get down to business with Cyberpunk until late 2016. And a lot of people on the team, most of them according to the article, found out at E3 2019 that the game was going to come out on April 16, 2020. Something that drove them crazy thinking about how on earth they would be able to finish the game by then. In fact, many believed that it was a joke, since they expected that the game had to be ready by 2022. Internally, the developers made bets and memes about delays in the game, how many delays there would be and for how long. In the end, they had to cancel some of the game's features and cut down the city to get there on time. Of course, CDPR had to respond to the article. Head of the company, Adam Badowski, replied through a tweet in which he kind of denies everything. Now, I'm sure many will think that that is normal, but it seems strange that they had to wait to see the report when Jason, the journalist, apparently contacted them before in case they wanted to give their version before publication. But they said no. In fact, he responded to Adam's tweet by saying that if they want to have an interview to publish their version, he would be delighted to do so. Adam basically says that the claim about the E3 demo and that the team did not believe that the game would be ready by 2020 is false. About this, he says, it's hard for a trade show game demo not to be a test vision or vertical slice two years before the game ships. 
But that doesn't mean it's fake. What the people reading your article may not know is that games are not made in a linear fashion and start looking like the final product only a few months before launch. And he adds, with his balls of steel, if you look at the demo now, it's different, yes. But that's what the work in progress watermark is for. Our final game looks and plays way better than what that demo ever was. Welcome to Jurassic Park. It's at this point that we invite you to play the game on your PS4 and see if it looks like anything better than the demo. Even just a tiny bit. Let's call it like it is, a game that lacks AI and has nothing to do with what they show. You know, sure, marketing, building hype and so on, all fair and legitimate. But it's not okay to lie. The game came out broken on platforms and it was not what they promised. There are no excuses. Be honest and say that by the end of the year, be ready and that's it. But don't take us for idiots. The issue of the game being ready in 2020 also got him wound up. Quote, you have spoken with 20 people. Some are former employees and only one is not anonymous. I would not call this that the majority of the staff of more than 500 people clearly said what you said. This is true, but you don't have to interview 500 people to find out what's really going on. And would you go on record with these comments? But maybe Adam should spend some time speaking to the PR team with CDPR, just to, you know, double check what he's putting out there. To say that the game is much better than what was seen at E3 2018 is laughable. And also the journalist gave you the opportunity to give your version and defend yourself, and you didn't take the chance. To be honest, at this point, CD Projekt Red has lost all credibility and we can't stand by and defend them any longer. Now please, just don't start with how much we hate them or whatever, because this is not the case. Before the game came out, if you watch our videos, we defended it to the death for everything they have done. But that time has passed, my friends, because we know what we saw at E3 and what we experienced in the game. We as consumers have a lot of blame for putting the game on a pedestal as we saw what they wanted us to see. But CD Projekt Red has done it wrong this time, and hopefully they will do much better next time. Now it's your turn. Who do you think is telling the truth? Do you think the game should have come out in 2022? Who do you think is to blame for poor planning? As always, tell us in the comments. Don't be shy guys. Leave us that like if you like the video. We appreciate it very much. See you very soon guys.